Okay, uh, today is April 26th of 2019. I think I saw that it was today is, uh, what is it, Earth Day or something like that. Or maybe it was yesterday, I can't remember. Well, anyway, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. And isn't this, it's really, this lit up this is really a beautiful microphone i just ordered it the other day 135 dollars or something like that it's a usb microphone i you saw a couple videos two or three videos made with it and i think the last one well i think i made three videos and uh the first one the audio, I think, was kind of low. And the second one, I think I made the audio was still a little bit low, but you could hear the, like, rumbling sound or something in the background. A few years ago, I've been making YouTube videos since they started in 2005. Uh, and in the beginning, oh, for years, I really did not think that... The audio was that important. Um, and then I've come to understand and accept the fact that uh, you all like good audio in addition to, you know, <clears throat> video or whatever. But anyway, there was, a little, there was a little bit of rumbling in it. And this comes, or this one, <laughs> comes with, you know, you know, a nine-foot USB cable. A nice cable, too. And... Uh, so I had the cable for the, see, can you see in the, right here is, the, let's see, Blue Yeti microphone that I'm using. I had that nine foot cable that ran out of the computer and it ran over here and it went over networking cables and it went over the uh, audio, you know, cable for the speaker system and it went over all these and it came around and had the over there <clears throat> so with that little bit of rumbling in the background I moved the microphone totally away from all that wiring and that seemed to uh, seem to work with that but you know oh this is a it's a beautiful microphone I just cannot get the audio up to the level that I want to get it you know I mean, I've adjusted the volume here, uh, gone into my settings and adjusted it, gone into the whichever, and I've got several different uh, programs for recording desktop and the uh, webcam picture and all that type of stuff. And I adjusted all the settings in there and just, it just doesn't get up to the level. Now I could go into uh, which I did in one of the videos. I think that was the first one where I... No, the first video I made was I did not upload. And because of, a few hours later, I got the new microphone. And so I recorded that and I put them together. And then the audio from the new microphone was so low, you know, from the regular headset that I was using. The audio was up here and the other. So I went in and uh, adjusted it in the software, uh, which I'm not, I'm lazy. <laughs> and I don't do a lot of, I should, I don't do a lot of uh, editing of the, you know, the videos or creating, you know, stuff. So anyway, that was not I didn't want to be doing that. I didn't want to be making a video and then having to process the audio. I want to make a video like this one and then upload it to YouTube. Um, so I uh, this morning tried this one again. You know, I had, well, I still had this hooked up, and I. Uh, 
tried it and I just could not get the audio level up. I mean, setting the things up all the way. And then, of course, I got a little bit of noise in, the, in it. And even then, up all the way, it just wasn't satisfactory. So I pulled out the USB cable and I plugged the USB cable into my Blue Yeti microphone. And I can I could see right away. I went to check the settings though. I could see the bar and I can look over here on this other screen and I can see that the as I'm talking the audio the green the blue line is actually it's a green line is way up there. So not sure what to do. This just took it out of the box yesterday or the day before. And I hate returning items. I very rarely return an item. Only if it's defective or whatever. And I don't think this is defective. Maybe if this was hooked up to somebody else's computer, their audio system might be a little bit different. I don't know. But I $135 I and I have a I have a bunch of microphones. You've seen them. I think I may just return this one. Then I can uh, purchase something else from Amazon. Uh, I watched South Park. Not sure what episode that that is. I watched the uh, South Park episode. Well, I watched a, several of them in a row, and I'm, and I'm not sure if this is. I'm up to date with them, but they did the thing on. Uh, Amazon Prime and uh, everything. That was that's funny, and I mean it resonates with all of us, you know, because everybody in the town was ordering from the kids were ordering. Everybody was having the package delivered. It was pretty. It's amazing that South Park is able to uh, make this animation and get it out almost right. I mean, you know, what is it, a week or something? And they. If something comes up, bang, the next show that's out is covering it. What did they, what was it watched before? Oh, anyway, I mean, it's just amazing that South Park is able to do that. <clears throat> I haven't watched, I've watched, I think what I'm going to do is just start over at the beginning and I'll have South Park episodes to watch for a long time if I, start doing some binge watching. Uh, anyway, so this is sort of a test video for my Blue Yeti and the audio and to see if they're in sync, which I think they will be because I'm looking at the control thing over here and I see I'm talking and everything appears to be in sync. Uh, Man, I'm glad I do not live in Saudi Arabia or whatever, where they crucify you and chop off arms and where they lash you a thousand times for infidelity or uh, uh, things like that, you know, for littering. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, they poor five-year-old boy that his parents apparently killed him. There had been repeated uh, reports of, and social service, children's social service or whatever, had investigated whatever. That's, I was in Florida too for years, five years, well, five years in Miami and the Florida Children's Agency or whatever had oh, tremendous, they were a joke and a, and a shame and and a disaster. Of course, they're overworked. They have too many caseloads, but they they just it didn't appear that they ever did anything correct. And they also had there was a baby or an infant, a baby I think, I think it was an infant found in Missouri. You know, dead someplace, and. Uh, Took a while for them for the uh, identity of the infant to be. It was an infant, yeah, or a small child. Took a while for them to come up with the identity, and when they came up, it was a child 
who was being monitored and supervised or whatever by the Children's Social Service in Florida. And apparently, I mean, apparently the social worker or whatever had, you know, had uh, never, because the kid had been gone for who know you know, and the social, I guess they had, and the person, they all had caseloads, a desk that were just piled up. And apparently this social worker and I guess others had checked off that they, you know, okay, let's see, I can't go there today or haven't been there in a month or whatever, but I'll just check that I, I did this. And I did check on the child. The child was okay. And the kid was in Missouri dead and had been there, you know. Oh, it's just... And I think, too, that things are now worse with uh, maybe not social workers and some people because they were doing it anyway. You know, if you're in an office, you've been surfing YouTube at work and uh, looking at porn at work and doing that kind of stuff. But now that everybody has cell phones and tablets and laptops and all that kind of stuff, People are doing it that are security people and police officers and everybody else. You see a lot of police officers now in vehicles on their, you know, cell phone or whatever. But then on the other hand, there are, uh, you don't know if they're talking to their wife and then they have to take a call from their girlfriend because they're also, you know, calling dispatch instead of tying up the radio channel. And then also I think sometimes they're given or they had they're doing an investigation on something and they had you know so sometimes they're working using their cell phone every time you see somebody but it's i think the effectiveness and the work output of people has just i worked uh, i worked hospital security for 30 years and then I worked actually a little bit longer than that because I worked other, I even had for a year of patrol service of my own. So I had longer than 30 years of doing that kind of stuff. But it was just the last few years, I lucked out in a way that we had cell phones. And like I was working uh, here in Texas after the 9-11 attack and I was working uh, security at uh, Love Field and then security at Addison Field and at each like Love Field there was two of us one guy would be inside the tower and then the other guy would be outside at the gate guard shack and then every two hours we would switch so but at especially at the Addison the guy I worked with there he would be outside at the the gate thing and I'd be inside or whatever you know we switched uh, he'd be out there and he'd be on the phone that was in there talking uh, all the time now of course he could see you know but still you know get up and walk around get, get oh, you know I mean but he was there and but then when he would when I would come out he would take his cell phone and then he would be on the cell phone as he walked in and when they'd go into the tower. Now, I'm not sure in the tower if he was using a phone in there or if he was using his cell phone. But then he'd be in there for two hours. And then when he would come out, he'd come out the door, he'd have his cell phone. And then, you know, I would go in or whatever. And the, at night at Edison, there was nobody in the control tower. They shut it down, I don't know, 11 o'clock or something like that. But anyway, the uh, people that worked there, you know, told me, and I'm sure told everybody, you know, said, oh, you can, uh, you can use the telephone in that, you can use the telephone in there. And if you want to use the computer, you can use the computer in there. And I thought, no, no way. And I'm a big computer person, you know. I'm a uh, big, uh, no, I never used their telephone. And I never, I mean, I'd use the telephone if it was an emergency. I never used the telephone in there. And I sure as hell never used, you know, one of their computers. That's, I don't know if that was, uh, if that was a trap, you know, or something or other. But anyway, this guy I worked with, he was on the telephone the entire 
think we worked eight hour shifts, I believe. He was on the phone all the time. And actually, he talked to his wife up till, I don't know, whatever time she went to bed, 11 o'clock or something like that. And uh, then he was talking to his girlfriend. So, oh wow, it's just, I love the new, I mean, I love the new age, but productivity and, and then we have, you know, people threatening each other and we have hate groups using the internet and just, we have got a mess and I have no idea how you, how you solve this type of stuff. Um, I'm looking at the screen here that, that you're seeing. Uh, says here, fire broke out for the second time this week at a Pennsylvania church. I haven't clicked on this or whatever. You know, it may be that that was just, it may be another case of arson at that, but it may easily just be that the fire wasn't totally really put out or whatever. I was uh, a reserve officer for, I don't know how many years, 10 years or more. And in the very beginning, all they had were reserve officers and they had like seven of us seven days in a week. I patrolled for years and years. You know, I was the only officer on duty. They didn't have any full-time officer. Then eventually they started, you know, they got one for the midnight shift and then eventually. But uh, a resident of the small town there gave the fire department a house, you know, gave it to them so, uh, and so that they could use the house uh, to put smoke machines in there and then train their, actually I went through the training for the volunteer fire department, but, <laughs> so, but you know, so you could, they could train them and whatever. And then I, I guess the idea was, okay, you can set the house on fire a little bit and, uh, you know, put it, you know, put it out or whatever. Anyway, the fire department started a fire in the house for training purposes. And uh, then they hooked into the hydrant that was right on the street, right in front of the house. There was no water, you know, in that, that hydrant. And the house burned down. And I came on duty and the dispatch said, told me what had happened and said the fire department they don't want to be called. They don't want to, they, they don't want to, you know. So I kept a close watch on the thing and occasionally I'd be going by and I'd see some flames, you know, popping up in there and I'd go and stomp them out, you know. Didn't call the fire department because I knew they didn't want to be, they didn't want to hear their, you know. It says here the study that the world is sadder and angrier. I believe that. I, and then the next thing is measles quarantine issued in two California universities. It, it is ridiculous. You know, when I was a kid, there was no vaccine for measles or mumps or anything. I got in the second grade, I flunked the second grade because I had measles twice during the uh, second grade. And I don't know whether this is that, you know, medically accurate or whatever. I think, I think it was like three day measles and then I got the seven day measles or something. That may be, if you're a medical person, maybe no, there's no such thing as, you know, whatever. And then of course also I had my grandmother that uh, lived with us. She died about when I was in third grade, I think. But she was with us for about a year or two. And uh, she had complete heart block and uh, she uh, took phenobarbital, which I guess is addictive and maybe gives you a little bit of a high or something. And she had overdosed a few times on it. She would take it. I mean, she's a grandma, you know. I mean, it's... And uh, so it was my job, you know. She would... Uh, I controlled the phenobarbital and she would ring her bell or whatever and when it was time and 
I'd go give her her phenobarbital. But also, I went to Catholic school, Catholic grade school and high schools. But that was holy name. And uh, so when she was there, I would wake up and she'd say, how are you, Jimmy? And I'd say, oh, I don't feel too good. And she'd say, do you want to stay home from school? And I need to stay home from school. That was another reason I flunked the second grade. Uh, but really, I mean, measles, when I was a kid, these things came through. I never got the mumps, but it wasn't just measles. Parents would send their kids over, go, visit, you know, Joe has measles, go over and visit Joe, or go spend the night at Joe, have a sleepover at Joe's house, because they wanted you to get the, you know, the measles. And with mumps, it was the same way, because I'm, and this is just, what I heard or was told back then, but I never got the mumps, was that, you know, you wanted to get the, if you were a boy, you wanted to get the mumps as a child. Because if, as a man, if you got the, the mumps, uh, you'd be probably not able to have children. It would sterilize you or whatever. Maybe that's not the proper word, but uh, so, Parents wanted their boy to get the mumps. We want grandkids. Kim Jong Un's train steals the show in Russia. I do love watching uh, Kim Jong Un when he's visiting another country, whether and he has these like twelve guys running, you know, beside the uh, the car. And a car, man, they, uh, they must be in pretty good shape. Of course, you wouldn't want to. Uh, and like when they, even when, the, and I watched this video here with a train, you know, and they have uh, a, a carpet for him and they have a thing that he can, you know, come out of, come down the ramp so he doesn't have to step down the thing or whatever. And the train there in Ukraine or, wouldn't be Ukraine, anyway, in Russia. You know, it wasn't quite lined up at the correct where the carpeting was, and these people, you, you know, they're like, "Oh my God," you know, and they're trying to, you know, because I don't think you want to make Kim Jong Un look bad, and they want everything to be perfect, or else because they're they always kind of look panicky, like, "Oh my God," U.S. president or something, they'd say. President Obama, could you just jump over here? Or, I mean, you know, over there, it's like. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, Biden being the Democratic. Of course, Elizabeth Warren, I would love to have. Uh, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a problem with Biden. But I don't know. I have, I'm old. I'm 78. I just think it's some, you know, like for television or what, like Larry King. I was a fan of Larry King when he was on the radio, when he didn't have a TV show. He did a radio show at night. I loved his show. Listen to it. Uh, you know, then he went to television or whatever. But then when he, he just got too damned old to be on TV and... You know, you have to be 35 to, years of age to be the president. I don't know. I just don't, you know, I don't have any answers. Should there be a cutoff age? You know, we're all living longer. I just, you know, I look at these old people. I don't have any mirrors. Well, there's a mirror in my bathroom. I don't have any mirrors in this room. Uh, when I was working in... Uh, Miami and working at security at a mall and then I'd have to go you know we'd switch off outside patrolling or dispatch in the mall or whatever I'd go in the mall and I'd be the only one in the mall you know gigantic mall I'm the only one there and I'm walking around and then as I go by you know you get the reflections off these windows or whatever and it'd just be like uh, I just have this thing of who the fuck is that oh, oh shit that's me you know 
Uh. Uh. The F-35 fighter, I think, is the one that's made or over here at uh, Lockheed Martin. Man, these weapons, you know, submarines, aircraft carriers. Oh, my God, they cost so much money. But, we, you know, we have to have a good defense. Of course, we're, it's, we're spending way more than we should have to spend. It's, well, like when the... Cold War was coming to an end and the USSR was changing, you know, changing or whatever. It was all, everybody thought, oh, this is going to be so great. And we, you know, we can, and of course I was blogging then saying, no, and I forget which I said, you know, <clears throat> they're going to have to come up with uh, bad guys and boogeymen or whatever so they can justify spending, you know, because there was talk, oh, the Cold War is coming to an end. Uh, the defense budget maybe can come down 10% or maybe 25%. Okay, that's, you know, such and such billions of dollars. Okay, we can have health care. Uh, we can have, you know, blah, blah. And, and of course, no. I mean, and then it was terrorism. And uh, they're never going to stop, you know. They'd probably love to have an alien ship come and be circling the earth or something, even if there was, even if it didn't do anything, it was just up there, you know, then you could, then they could justify, oh, we have to have, you know, alien tanks to fight the aliens. We have to have, it just, they're just looking to spend money. Republicans here in the United States, conservatives, uh, complain about welfare and I forget what the numbers are, but, you know, uh, wealth, pro welfare programs, you know, account for maybe this amount of money. But welfare for the corporations or whatever, it's like, you know, this amount of money. When you talk about welfare, you're talking about major corporations. They get all kinds, you know, get all types of money. So... What's the Supreme Court doing behind closed doors? Uh, I don't know. What do you do behind closed doors? What is the Supreme Court doing? Um, oh, I don't know. Supreme Court likes to, they don't like to have, they prefer to have They don't like it to look like that they're making rulings based on, you know, whether they're Democrats or Republicans or whether they were appointed by a Democrat. And that's really sad. It should be, and I don't know the solution to that, except the solution is not, uh, the thing is not for the president to pick somebody. It should be, we need to change something. I don't know how you do it. Do you have the you know, the lawyers guild or whatever, do you have them pick somebody you don't want that? They're probably all, you know, don't know what the solution is, but the system doesn't work now with the president picking somebody of his, only of his party and who agrees with whatever his, you know, thing is. And then too, I just hate it when any the decision is made, when something comes up, uh, the news media will, oh, okay, well, uh, the justices appointed by, you know, Bush and by uh, Reagan and, you know, all the, you know, all the Republicans, they all voted this way. And then the judges who were appointed by Clinton or, you know, where they named the Democratic presidents that were appointed by those, they voted the other way. You know, it should be, uh, it should be that a judge would make, you know, like be there. Oh, hell, I don't believe in abortion, or but I have to rule that they can't, you know, abridge abortion, or they can't make a woman, you know, have an ultrasound and then make her see, you know, then say, this is your baby and you can't get an abortion unless you give it, an, you know, this 
fetus a name. I mean, just crap that, you know, it shouldn't be that type of situation that the judges rule. It ought to be like, okay, you know, I'm a liberal Democrat and I'm really opposed to all the guns that are out there, but the Constitution does say that, say in this case, you know, that, yes, I think the citizens should have a right, you know, but they, I don't think they do. I think, okay, I'm a, you know, I'm a Republican. Uh, guns for everybody, tanks for everybody, flamethrowers for everybody, you know, and uh, whatever the other side would be, you know, the, Democrat, the Democrats are, you know, it should be, a judge should be able to be impartial and decide on you know, issues or whatever. But I don't believe that, you know, which Bork, was it Bork or whatever that passed away? And his, but he violated his philosophy or his thing. His thing was, whatever the Constitution says, that's it. You have to, you know, have to look at it and you have to take into consideration times or whatever, you know, there was, there was no internal revenue service. There was no income tax in the original, you know, Constitution. When they were talking about right to bear arms, they were talking about, you know, a, a militia or whatever that you could call up because, of the you know, the, when the British showed up with Concord or whatever, the local militia got their muskets or whatever. They never intended that a citizen, you know, the, in the Constitution, if they had known, they would never have intended that somebody could, you know, own, uh, you know, assault ra rifles and this type. And so you have to take into consider, you know, consideration a lot of, a lot of factors. Well, just, I'm just saying, don't judge the Constitution based on, you know, just like you have, uh, I did the 2000 census and I don't, I wish that things hadn't changed. I wish I hadn't, well, I don't want to be dead, but you know, it's uh, 2000 and coming up, 2020 coming up. I did the 2000 census in Missouri and that made me feel so good about the United States, so good about the American people. We were doing the, a short form and a long form, which oh, I hated doing, everybody hated the long form. But everybody that I called on was nice. And it was in kind of a redneck rural area of Missouri. That's where I, I lived in that area. And uh, the pe people were remarkable. I, I mean, we didn't, ask, I didn't, we didn't ask any questions like, well, you had to list the children, you know, and that everybody, you know. But there was people, white people, who had ad adopted handicapped children. There were white people who had adopted black and Hispanic children. There was just, and out of all the people that I called on, and I called on a lot of people for the census, there was only one crazy guy who yelled and screamed at me right from the beginning and wouldn't let me say anything. Everybody else was really nice. Now, some of them I called, you know, they'd say, I don't think I want to do it. And I'd say, you know, uh, why don't you want to uh, do it? Well, and, I, and then I'd say, well, if you let me, we'll do the census. And if there is a question that you object to, you know, tell me and I'll tell you why they need that information. If you don't agree, then just don't answer that question, whatever. So everybody... Uh, you know, everybody agreed. Uh, but now I would, I would hate to be a, somebody doing the census. I mean, uh, I'd have, you'd have to buy your own bulletproof. I mean, I really, I think it's, it's gotten really hostile. By the way, one of the few things that are in the Constitution of the United States, our founding fathers, they drafted this wonderful, I think now it does need to be changed, unfortunately. 
few years ago, I'd have said, no, don't change anything. I think it needs to be changed. Some tr things need to be changed in it. But one of the few things that it is in the Constitution is that every 10 years, the Founding Fathers put in every 10 years a complete census, and the way it's worded, it means, you know, actually going and asking the questions of the person, not doing some type of, which I would, I have no, would have no problem now with them doing it statistically, you know, you do a small thing and then you can, and it's, per, you know, but I can understand where, I can understand there where the Republicans would say, no, it says right in there that, you know, and it, okay, but uh, we'd save a ton of money and it would be just as accurate and maybe more accurate. But one of the, that's one of the few things in there in the Constitution is that a census will be done. Anyway, this guy that I went to his door, you know, I'm, I'm with the uh, Census Bureau, or whatever, like to uh, uh, do your census. Uh, Get the hell off of my property and don't you come back. I'm not telling you a goddamn thing, blah, blah, blah. So, actually, of course, I don't think anybody out of 300 million people, I don't think anybody in the United we, they were here in Texas, there was a female lawyer who, at the last census, I think it was, and a guy didn't even come to her door. He was, she had, she lived in a, a place that had a, one of these gates, you know, uh, not a, it wasn't a, a um, well, maybe the entire complex was a gated community, but at her place, she had, you know, iron gates or whatever and a brick wall, you know, away from her place. And he was there to do the census and she came down, uh, pulled a gun out and shot him. I can't remember now if she killed him or not. But, uh, Anyway, what I was going to try to, oh, did I, anyway, oh, you could actually be charged with a crime for not doing the census, but I don't think in the entire, I don't, the Census Bureau made it clear, we're not going, you know, that, that, would, uh, that would set the right wing, you know, Republican conspiracy people that were saying that uh, Clinton was building, uh, stockades and things to uh, lock up, you know, American citizens so the blue-helmeted United Nations troops could come in and take over the United States and all this kind of, you know. But so what I was going to try to explain to this man, and I was like, well, sir, could I get off of my, and I said, if I could get off my, you know. what I was going to tell him was, okay, sir, here's, here's what's going to happen. You know, I'm going to leave, but they're going to send another uh, census worker out here to see if that person can, you know, maybe communicate with you or whatever. Maybe you just don't like me, you know, or something. So they're going to send, and you're going to, I'm sure you're going to tell him to get the hell out of there. Then they're going to send a supervisor out. And he's going to, because... You know, he's a supervisor and he thinks, you know, he's going to come out and you're going to tell him, get the hell out of here, you know. So then, let me tell you what's going to happen. Census workers are going to be sent to your neighbors. And your neighbors are going to be asked, you know, how many children do you know? How many children they have? Do you know? And they'll gather whatever information they can from them in order to get the census, you know. But of course, I never got to, and of course, he probably would have, I probably would have, he'd have probably killed me by that point, you know. But uh, I really, in 2000, I, I was really proud of the United States and really surprised. How I was, you know, I didn't, I wasn't negative then and everything, but I just, man, that was a good feeling. And I encouraged people after that, you know, hey, when the next census comes up, you know, be sure and do it because it's a really up, you know, of course now it's gone down the tubes. Um, so, uh, I think I did, I mentioned the thing of, I think I did, measles. This is crazy that we have now an outbreak of 
measles when it was non existent, you know, it was over. The United States was measles free, you know. And now we, because we have people who won't be vaccinated. And I don't know what you do with, you know, I think everybody should be vaccinated. And the problem is, I don't know what they're going to do, but the problem is, I think, I think even out in California, you know, if you have a religious reason for not uh, having the kids vaccinate, vaccinated, well, okay, then they can go, you know, okay. Or if you have some type of uh, medical, you know, reason, maybe the, you know, the kid is a cancer patient and has been given chemicals that makes them have zero, you know, immunity or something like, you know, whatever. Well, then that's, you know, but it's crazy that diseases that were wiped out. When I was a kid, it was, you know, measles, mumps, and polio. And polio would come through, I guess, at the beginning of spring or summer or something, rather. And there would be tons of cases, tons of kids going into iron lungs. Uh, in my last year of grade school, uh, a girl that was in the uh, class with me, uh, she got polio. And uh, she ended up not able to walk. And I saw years later on the newspaper that her father, you know, built, she wanted to be able to walk down the aisle when she got married. And he built her a little platform or whatever. And then he, you know, held her, her father held her arm and took her down. And so she could go down the aisle to, in order to get married. Uh, my ex-wife, um, see, how much age? She was, when we got married, she was 18, I was 26, so do the math. Uh, at about age five, she got polio and had to use crutches for the rest of, you know, she spent, I think, nine months in the hospital and, uh, you know, had to use crutches. She's wheelchair bound now. Uh, but I can remember every spring or summer when the, they would close down swimming pools, they closed down movie theaters. Um, and I remember watching on TV, you know, as a kid. And uh, they uh, they said that, which not 100% tr you know, true, I think it depends on which, what type of, you know, you could have polio that, you know, affected your breathing, you have polio affected your legs and all this, but TV show or something said that if you couldn't touch your chin to your chest, you know, then you had polio or something. And so every night when I'd go to bed, I'd, I'd, I'd do that, see if I could touch my chin to my chest. If for some reason I couldn't do that, I don't know if I'd have gone running at my parents or what, you know. And there again, oh, anyway, uh, I was going to say, if you're a medical person, you might say, oh, Jim, no, you know, whatever, which is fine, leave a comment. Except what my ex-wife has found is that uh, she goes to the emergency room or goes to her doctor or whatever, and, you know, she, you know, says, well, I had polio or whatever. What? Polio? Is it contagious? Uh, they don't know. They're not taught. You know, the polio vaccine came too late for her. Her parents didn't, you know, refuse it. It just came too late for her. Uh, I remember getting the polio. It started out the first thing or whatever. It was, you know, injected, injected, you know. And then by the time, you know, right away, then it became oral. You could just drink it out of a cup or something. And then I remember that I, you know, old people, we, I don't know if the shirt shows up or not, you know, we had the smallpox vaccine. We had a little, you can tell on, I'm not sure if it's still there or not. And, uh, 
people are not vaccinated. Maybe if you're going to a foreign country or maybe you're going to certain countries, maybe you have to have a smallpox. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have a passport. Uh, my wife and at that time two kids, we did go to Mexico, but we did, they didn't ask us for any... Uh, I wonder how the military, because I've heard that they line those guys up, you know, because they never know, you know, they never know where they're going to be. And they they give them shots for everything. I tried to get into the military. My in, intention was to make it a career in the military, but I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. Um, I think I've mentioned a few times, I may, I'm exaggerating a little bit, I worked my entire life. And I always worked. I mean, I had two jobs for many years. And when I, whatever job I had, I always, you know, always worked. I didn't, you know, let something, you know, I, I just worked, no matter what I was being paid, you know, I never, you know, but, um, What was I going to say? Well, I can't remember now. There was something I was going to say, or I wouldn't have said that, but then it... Uh, this is interesting. I didn't... A Massachusetts judge is charged with helping an undocumented immigrant escape an ICE officer. I don't even know what that's about. Was, did the judge have a undocumented uh, immigrant, you know, as his uh, house, you know, made? Or, I gotta click on this, this is, this is bizarre. Or did he have uh, somebody doing his gardening or what in the heck? A Massachusetts judge and a former court officer are accused of helping a twice deported undocumented defendant elude immigration authorities by slipping out a rear courthouse door. Okay, I'm not going to read anymore, but in a way I could understand, um, you know, the judge, the, the court is doing their thing and maybe they're not, uh, and maybe they know that, uh, you know, ICE is going to the courthouse and checking everybody, you know, that goes in or comes out or does something. Still not good because a judge is supposed to, you know, but it's also, you know, ICE officers and Border Patrol and what, well, actually Border Patrol can set up at the border and X number of miles inside and they can set up a roadblock and they can check everybody and there's some type of legislation or whatever covers them. You know, they can stop you and you can be, you know, a, uh, you know, an American citizen. They can, uh, you're going to be saying, I'm an American citizen. You can't, I, I, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. And they, they have legislation and laws that they can do stuff that you think, this is unconstitutional. I'm an American citizen. Oh, tough, you know. Within 200 miles or 250 miles or whatever, we are authorized to do this and blah, 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 blah. So this may be something like that, that uh, uh, ICE officers or immigration or whatever are they're knowing that, hey, poor people end up in this court, uh, whatever. So we'll just check, you know, if I'm out driving around looking for somebody, you know, and I've already gone to, sit to tar not Target, whatever, they make fun of, you know, uh, Home Depot. Okay, I've already driven around Home Depot and picked up the people that are standing out there looking to get a job. 
but I, when I stop there, only uh, three out of ten are, you know, illegal. But if I go to the court building and start checking people there, I can get five out of ten, and my boss will give me a good rate. I don't know what the situation is, but but. Uh, Well, I'm jumping down here. I skipped over a whole bunch, I'd say. The governor of, what state is this? Massachusetts. Well, God damn. Massachusetts and they have a Republican governor. What? I didn't know there was any Republicans in. I'm exaggerating a little bit. The governor believes that no one should obstruct federal law enforcement officials trying to do their jobs and supports the Supreme Court decision to suspend Judge Joseph without pay. So, okay, this Republican governor believes that no one up should obstruct federal law enforcement officers trying to do their jobs. Click. Okay. So, firearms, what is it? FDA, not FDA. What is it? Bureau of Firearms. So, the, so this judge is also going to support uh, federal agents who are out enforcing what few guns control, you know, laws there are, I think, I don't think so, you know. So this is the problem that we have in this, you know, this nation. Republican governor, okay, you know. Uh, but, you know, Then he also says, the governor, the people of Massachusetts expect, just like they expect judges to be fair, impartial, and follow the laws themselves. Okay, Republican governor. So he supports Supreme Court rulings on uh, abortion and all the other decisions that, you know, they they've made. I don't think so. The ACLU calls the case an assault on justice in Massachusetts courts. So it will... Anyway. Well, i got to decide what I'm going to do about this microphone. I guess return it. I just couldn't get... It. It looks great, and just could not get the volume up to the level that I can get this one up to, and probably some other microphones that I have. And I've got a bunch of microphones. You've seen them. I think I've lined them up here before. Well, you haven't seen all of them, but anyway. Thanks for watching the video.